Ladies and gentlemen, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of inspiration and realness. Also, this is the YouTube channel vlog show of positivity, personality, and fun. This is Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. And now the perpetrator of these shenanigans, Big Beefy E himself from his Big Beefy Man Cave in New Bedford, Massachusetts. Mr. Shenanigans himself and the two-time Chilling 3000 2022 End of the Year Awards winner, Eric M. Lima. Thank you very much, Mr. Announcer, sir. Well, hello there, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of Eric Lima's Shenanigans of 1977. This is episode 745 of the show. And what's going on? What's going on? 15 more episodes to reach that milestone. Wait, no, 745. 55 more episodes to reach that milestone of 800 episodes. What am I thinking? All right, we got a long way to go. Don't worry about that. Um, yeah. Here, here I am once again doing a show. Going to give you what happened last uh, just just a few minutes ago on AEW Dynamite. Just finished watching that. And by the way, the Red Sox won. They beat the Braves. Yay! Congratulations. All right, Tristan Casas and I'm Duvall. We're, we're uh, hit key home runs to get the Red Sox to win the to win the um, win the two game series against the Atlanta Braves. Uh, the AEW International Championship was on the line uh, at AEW Dynamite. Orange Cassidy took on AR Fox, and Orange Cassidy won a great matchup. When you know Orange Cassidy gifts AR Fox his his, son, his shades, like uh, in the signs of sportsmanship, but AR Fox grabs the you know after they looked up each other's hands, but AR Fox grabs the um, glasses, crumples them, and punches him in the face. Which kind of shocked the fans, but then all of a sudden, Darby Allen gets into uh, AR Fox. And says, "What are you doing, man? This is disgraceful. What are you doing, man? I gave you this opportunity, and this is how you, I get thankful. Come on, man, take the loss, man, like a man." And AR Fox didn't want to explain more on that situation with AR Fox. Then dur during that all that all incident, uh, after that incident, John Moxley attacks Orange Cassidy afterwards. So, well, Moxley may go after the international title. Who knows? Rene Paquette interviewed Don Callis and Chris Jericho. He said, well, I got some spe uh, special and presented Jericho with a painting with uh, Bad News Brown in the background um, or Bad News Allen and it has um, Jericho and Callis. So, uh, more on that situation. So, Chris Jericho... Go so accepts a tag team matchup next week in Dynamite 200 as he teams with Kanosuke Takeshita against the against the team of uh, Daniel Garcia and Sammy Guevara of the Oracle Appreciation Society. This is going to be interesting. Hook basically kind of promo, silent promo. He walks, he sits down in the subway with the FTW title. And then when the train goes by, the title disappears. And then he gets up and goes. And so... And then... Uh, the BCC cut a promo and says, hey, listen, don't play with fire. Don't mess with the BCC. And it looks like he ended up like Orange Cassidy. So, getting beat up for it. Uh, Tony Schiavone interviewed Jungle Boy Jack Perry. I found out the Beethoven theme that he did. Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, I do believe. I think that was the case. And um, so, so Jungle Boy Jack Perry... Then he yells at Taz that he's gonna, that is old and the, the 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 ECW he would kick their butts. And Jerry Lynn of all people decided to show up. And in fact, I, I just I just checked out Twitter or X as it's now called. And Justin Credible says, "Give me three minutes in the ring with that punk." I want to see Justin Credible come to the go to AEW just to see him beat the crap out of Jungle Boy. Uh, 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 go beat the crap out of Jack Perry. And then all of a sudden, you know, when Jerry Lynn comes out, he calls him Jungle. And, you know, Jungle Boy's dead. So, they even have a face-to-face -face meeting. Renee Paquette interviewed Britt Baker. And DMD says he's gonna re she's going to remind Ty of Valkyrie. And everybody, what TBS really stands for, The Brit Show. Well, Jay Cargill basically left AEW. Why not, right? I think she should challenge Chris Statlander for the TBS title, to be honest. And then, oh, this is the irony of this matchup. You know, <clears throat> now, Pac, when he was in the WWE as Neville, 
he was nicknamed the man that gravity forgot. Okay. Who does Pat go up against? A guy from Mexico by the name of Gravity. I'm like, you gotta be kidding me. When I first saw this, I'm like, what? Wait a minute. Dude. <laughs> the irony is just too funny. And we got to Pac. Pac decided to, to capitalize on that joke going, you remember me? You remember me? You don't remember me? I'm gonna remind you. Oh, it was hilarious. I'm like, the man that Gravity forgot. Oh. And the man that gravity forgot, Pac, he was nicknamed that. I'm like, who you got? I, ha! He was a funny thing. I'm like, what, dude? <coughs> oh, what's up with me, Jeepers? You know, though, sometimes the summer weather can really drive you crazy. Don't play around with your sciences, dude. Anyways, Pac made sure that gravity remembers him. <laughs> he won the match. By the way, it was hilarious. I thought, I thought to me that was the funniest thing. And during that, uh, BCC was watching you know, the match in the back because of uh, what Pac did to Claudio Castagnoli and all that. And then when they Paquette, Paquette interviews MJF and Adam Cole, and then and then they were driving to, uh, they were uh, respecting each other, of course, trying to be good friends. And MJ goes, I'll give you a shot at the title. Are you sure about this? And Roderick Strong went after Max. Because Roderick Strong, no, doesn't even trust Max, Max Jacob Freeman. And Adam Cole's, listen, chill out. I got this. You know? It's like Adam Cole is going to be playing MJF for a full. And you know what? I don't mind that one bit. Somebody needs to teach that Beavis looking butthead a lesson. And that is my fact. Uh, so, anyways, uh, then Renee Paquette interviewed FTR, saying, "You know what? We respect you, Adam Cole, but uh, that loss to, to you didn't sit well with me. So they want they want to go in there and remind MJF and Adam Cole, aka Better Than You, baby, a lesson in why they are the AEW Tag Team Champions." Then. Uh, <laughs> Then Darby Allen went one on one with uh, Swerve Strickland. I forgot. Who, uh, I think. <clears throat> and uh, and um, Nick Wayne decided to come out ringside to uh, be in Darby's corner. And during the matchup, he held out Prince Nana while the hooded figure attacked Darby Allen. That hooded figure is not on the AR Fox, which I was kind of shocked. And then he attacked uh, Nick Wayne after the matchup. But then Prince Nana hands him a Mogul Embassy shirt. A.R. Fox has joined the Mogul Embassy. Wow. I think A.R. Fox is probably sick and tired of being the nice guy. And, uh, and tried to win um, and decided to join a winning team. Hopefully, it's So 2.0, that's Matt Menard and uh, Angelo Parker. A very pregnant time... Melo Guevara and Anna J confront Jericho about Don Callis and Anna J says you're selfish and you know what just like Jake we can't give you a hundred percent and they and they all walked out so it looks like to me that Jericho's put in an awkward position by Callis to be to be totally honest then Dr. Brickett Baker DMD took on Taya Valkyrie and Britt Baker won the matchup with the lockjaw. Very quick. Look at he split. He's fat. Okay. I hate ducks. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Scott Steiner for you. So. Uh, the Rampage Tag Team Battle uh, Battle Royal participants like the Hardys are back together. Which Jeff Hardy referenced to Rock. I don't know if you saw that. It doesn't matter. I'm like. Hey, he's been hanging around with the Rock too many times during the Attitude Era. Uh, and then, and then uh, the team of Satnam Singh and Jay Lethal. Okay. But then, you know, Ethan Page and Isaiah Cassidy says something. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens uh, in that battle royal. But then Nyla Rose and, Hick and Hikaru Hikaru Shida cut a promo, and they both want to be AEW Women's Champion once again. And, in fact, Hikaru Shida says she's going to unfinish business with Tony Storm, and she's going to make sure she gets that shot. And then, 
and then the best friends, Lucha Brothers, and John Moxley, Claudio Castagnoli battle out in a tag team triple threat, which Orange Cassidy came out during the matchup and one goes after uh, Moxley, distracting the other teams. And Luke and Lucha Brothers, the Lucha Brothers took advantage of the situation and ended up winning the matchup, and all three teams continued to brawl after the match to end Dynamite. Right there, it's ended... As you know, this is the final Dynamite for July 20, uh, July 2023. I am really excited about what's going to happen on the 200th episode of Dynamite. Well, that's it. So, that's all the time we have on the show. I'm going to upload this video and get some sleep because my brain is going to wacko. So, <laughs> it's been a crazy week so far. So, see you guys later. And until the next episode comes rolling around, Mr. Announcer, take us home. That is all for today's episode of the show. This is Mr. Lima speaking for Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. A big beefy E, do it for Bob Saget production. And in association with a sweet both of raving dingleberries, telepictures, and distribution. Thank you for watching another great episode of Eric Lima Shenanigans of 1977. Until the next episode, goodbye for now.